Well, welcome to True Living Wellness. I'm Oyinko. And I'm Oyinda. And this is your one stop hub for all things wellness. Thank you for joining us today. Um, today we're going to be talking about holistic living in Lagos. In Lagos. Um, yeah, <laughs> in Lagos. <laughs> if you live in Lagos, and if you've visited Lagos, then you know just what we're talking about. Lagos is one of the most populous cities in the world. Yep. It's a financial capital of Nigeria. And um, I mean, we have close to 20 million people that live in Lagos, and more keep coming in every day. And half of those people live and work in Victoria Island. I'm <laughs> sure of it because the the traffic it just seems like there's just so yeah. many people it, here. But we'll get to that. It feels like there car. isn't rush hour anymore. It's just no, traffic. It's just traffic. <laughs> Every time it's traffic time, no matter what time of the day you go out, it's ridiculous. And um, Lagos is a very very stressful, very very stressful environment. And not just because it's such a busy city, the way our lives have also evolved. So we're in this um, computer age, new age, um, social media, everything just seems to be very, to be happening so quickly. Mm -hmm. That alone also adds a lot of pressure on us mentally, emotionally, um, corporately. Everybody has such big deadlines. Yeah, and um, long hours. Long hours, all of these things play on our or they zap from our energy they zap from our sense of well-being if we're not paying attention you just find out that you're like this all the time you're so yeah. stressed yeah. and you don't quite know how know to cope, how to cope. To yeah i mean and, and there's even the pollution the noise yep. um environmental pollution um there's a lot going on in lagos and i think i read a report that said lagos was the third most stressful city in the world i believe and the other two cities above Lagos had recently experienced civil war. Oh wow! So <gasps> imagine like just how you know intense That's not it even is. Right. I know. That's not even right. So, um, and, but then I I agree with it mm. because the number of almost everybody I personally know is taking high blood uh, pressure medication. Oh, wow! It's ridiculous. Uh, obesity is also rising. Um, a lot of illnesses are rising that are all tied back. To our lifestyle yeah. and the balance that we're striking. And if you think about the health healthcare system here, it's, it's first of all it can't cope with the number of people, but it's yeah. also you know quite flawed as well. On many levels. Yeah. But we're not going to go into healthcare. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to talk into, about healthcare. However, we find that we have to find a balance so that we don't burn out quickly, um, and so that we can achieve all the goals that we were created to achieve because everybody does have a purpose there is a reason why we have these bodies these cars of ours that get us from point a to point b and so to be able to achieve that we need to strike a balance irrelevant of our environment the environment is just the stage but we still have to deliver our lines and you know you look at life as a movie so how do you live? How do you find balance? How do you find try to live holistically? So, First off, <laughs> what is holistic to you? What does holistic okay. mean? I mean, so for me, I really look at myself as a whole being. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I think about well-being or you know even managing my own health, I think about my mind, my body, and my soul. Yeah. So I build in um, different things throughout the day, the week, the month. Um, that helps to support me in those different spheres, I guess. Okay. Um, so it's how I eat, it's how much sleep I get, it's you know the places I occupy, and even the decisions I make, uh, and also where my attention is, my focus. Yeah. Um, so a few years ago, I started practicing mindfulness, and I think that that has actually helped shape my wellness and my holistic journey. Just so, in case you don't know, um, Oyinda has a background in nutrition yeah but she's a mental health advocate yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. how did you get into oh. into why mental health i mean nutrition i can understand but when you now switch to mental health i mean to that? it comes back to the holistic element you know what i realized is that um 
I am quite concerned with the body as a whole. Yeah. And nutrition actually is generally about control. It's not even just about, you know, food. Just, and it's, it's not about yeah. food and it's not only about your physical health. Yeah. You know, what you eat actually affects how you feel as well, yeah. like your emotions. Yeah. Know, people eat emotionally yeah. and even mentally, if you're not getting the right nutrients, then yeah. you can start having issues like even with memory. And, yeah. I so. mean, I was reading a research that a lot of, I mean, we, we know that the gut, the gut is called our second brain yeah. and that's where hormones are produced, that's where <clears throat> half of our immune system is and a lot of the things, I mean when we're, because you know depression seems to be on the rise mm. and mental health is trending, uh, I was reading this research about how everything we eat, because it goes, your body converts it or produces hormones from it, it goes back and it affects our mental well-being so depression could actually be because you're not eating right or you're not you know eating what your body needs you to be eating and i found that so fascinating i know that nutrition affects you know it's more than just i need to lose weight yeah exactly i have diabetes exactly type thing. exactly you know i i notice i mean most people notice that when they're hungry <laughs> <laughs> they're a little bit angry but yeah. I actually noticed that um, I wasn't feeling very healthy I was really um, depressed yeah. and I didn't feel fulfilled uh, and when I looked at my diet I was eating a lot of junk food at the time mm -hmm. so there was a correlation between them but when I started eating um, like a much more whole food um, diet yeah. I, I saw the improvement in my mood um, and it's just an experiment. If you do an experiment with yourself and see like when you start eating heavier foods um, that are kind of junk, I would say junk and not whole foods, you can actually do it if you keep a journal. Yeah, you can track it to track yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so share with us, how do you, this has turned into an interview, this is not <laughs> no. an interview, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see, what is holistic living to me? Um, Holistic, you know, it's about looking at the body as a whole, like Guida said. So it's not a mind, it's not a my my spirit, it's not a my body. It's everything working together as one. And so looking at it all as one. So like she said, if we eat, that our food affects our minds or the way we think and clarity. And if you just see that it's all one huge circle, and one bit affects the other. So that's how I, that's what holistic is to me. And how, um, and I'm not quite sure how I realized that. I think I real, I remember now. So it was from when I was running the studio. <clears throat> and so I used to run this run at this fitness studio for women. And in the mid, after a while I noticed that our turnover was really high. Or this week, new ladies will fall out and then new ladies will join us and so we now started talking and just you know brought a coaching element into it and in the process of that we found out that um you know some people were just not sleeping well some people had just emotional emotional stuff that they were dealing with and all those different elements and it just and for me it just showed me how it affected how all those other parts of our lifestyle affected something as basic as I need to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And I just, that was how I started tracking it and thinking, OMG, this thing is bigger than exercising and eating um, a certain way. And that even made me start questioning how we eat, what we eat, and why we eat. And, you know, just got me on this whole wellness journey. And so I started incorporating that in myself. Um, I also realizing that, also in that period, I realized I wasn't very fulfilled. So even though I was exercising, even though I was mindful about what I had, I wasn't so physically I was doing okay. Yeah. But emotionally and mentally, I wasn't doing okay at all. And all of that also then fed into this my spiritual balance as well because I had questions there that I wasn't quite getting the answer for. Mm -hmm. And so finding out that. And so that just got me on that journey of okay, how do you find balance in between your spirit, your mind and soul, 
and your body because your spirit is what downloads the yeah. ideas, the the values. That's yeah. where your body holds. That's your value system, really. Love, beliefs, and all of that. Then there's the soul and the mind that processes things. Yeah. So what you're reading, what you're listening to. So those are like your glasses, yeah. and on how you see the world and and stuff. And then your body is how you then experience how you then experience yeah. it, how you then you know manifest whatever. And you know, just now realizing that, okay, how do we strike um, that balance? And that was my journey. And I started paying attention to the music, yeah. what I listened to. Mm-hmm. I started paying attention. I paid more attention to what I was, how my body was responding to certain things, like I love granite. Anybody close to me knows I love granite <laughs> peanuts. O M G. I mean, I love it. I love it. However, my gut and my skin mm-hmm. doesn't love it so yeah. once i have a handful it shows up all over my face okay. and so i have to pull back and track as in what's causing all of this so journaling mm-hmm. so i said writing down keeping a few journal okay what did i eat when did i eat it and that's how i tracked it down to the wow. brand and wow. like omg mm-hmm. my favorite thing <laughs> so you know so being mindful yeah. of um what I was eating and how my body was responding is one of the ways that I live mm-hmm. holistically. Mm-hmm. Um, exercising, exercising helps me. I teach Pilates and I practice Pilates, and I find that it really, it really helps me to let go of tension, to just sort of reconnect with my core mm-hmm. type thing. So I can, I just, and when I say reconnect with my core, I just feel connected to me. It's not like I'm having any kind of out of body experience yeah. i just feel alive okay. i can feel the pain i of you know the exercise yeah. i've just done i can feel my muscles moving. Yeah. i'm like okay yes i'm alive yeah. <laughs> type thing so and you're in your body i'm in my body yeah. i'm present yeah i'm present mm-hmm. so that that's the way that i find balance another thing that i do is i um and you mentioned it earlier when we talking scheduling yeah so i process what is it that i'm doing today because of the traffic outside omg if i can avoid certain um going out at a certain time so i know that between 12 and 3 the sun is at its highest traffic is also high also between about four and five as well traffic is high. So i try to avoid having sessions yeah. You know where I have to go out at yeah. those times, mm-hmm. or keep it close to, and you know schedule myself mm-hmm. that way. Or another thing that I do, if it's unavoidable, is I pick a day that I'm like, okay, all my um, meetings in a kedja, all my meetings, let me the do them all on yeah. one day. Yeah. Do all of that, yeah. and uh, and then come back and just pass out, <laughs> <laughs> try to recuperate yeah. and all that. Um, yeah, that. What else? I mean, yeah, for me, scheduling is probably my number one thing. So I remember in 2017, I believe, I got a time management coach. Oh, wow. um, and he, luckily for me, he had like the same sort of values yeah. as me. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, actually, we fed off each other, where it, it's moved now from being like pure time management to being awareness management. Um, awareness yeah so um it's not so we so i schedule my appointments Mm -hmm. but i also have broken down my schedule to 10 key areas okay um so that i'm not just working or i'm not just spending time with people or i'm not wasting time so i've broken it down to different areas to make sure that i'm building myself in different areas so i have time i have time to my schedule uh, for personal development career development um, all in one day or over a week? So it's all, I mean, it's, it, it depends. Because obviously, um, you, the more times you change task in a day, um, generally you're less productive. That's what studies say. But what okay. I do is I block. So I okay. do time blocking. Um, so if I'm doing one thing for an hour, I, I'm doing that thing in that hour. So you're not trying to do I'm not two other things. Multitasking, I'm single tasking. Multitasking is not as efficient. It's just the worst think. thing. I yeah. know. So I try and single task and be very mindful. Like if if this is time for me and my you know loved ones, then that's what that time is. Um, and the great thing about keeping your diary is that it's um, 
it's like journaling as well in that you can go back and see what's going on so i could be like you know what this week i feel super you know energized why and i can go through my diary and i can see it's because you know i met my target of spending 20 hours with uh, friends and family i met my target of working maybe 30 or 40 hours a week so i was meeting targets but then i also met my target of sleep and for me my sleep target is eight hours a night what time do you go to bed um i go to bed quite late actually so i wake up pretty late as well <laughs> so i go to bed between 11 and 12 so trust mm. me so i always tell people that sorry nothing great happens before 10 o'clock for me because I also have a morning routine as well mm -hmm. and uh, so I have to do my morning routine as well and it just sets me off for a good day and do you feel rested when you go to bed and when whenever you wake up do you feel rested so the thing is I um I don't have an alarm clock okay so, so you let your body yeah you okay yeah okay because um I believe in the um, circadian rhythm me and too. going to bed about 10 10 30 I find that, I mean, I used to do long hours before and everything, but I found that if I go to bed between 10, 10, 30, I wake up usually about 2, 30, 3, and I am focused. Yeah. I have good energy for the day. No I way. only start to get tired about... Six or seven in the evening, and then I start to wind down. But yeah. I, but you before I would go to bed like um, eleven, like twelve, and I still notice that sometimes if I go to bed late and I wake up about six or seven, mm. I'm still goggy, and I don't do the alarm clock mm. thing too. I still find that, that I'm goggy. I'm not as sharp and mm. I'm not as focused, and I'm like, there's some truth to this yeah. thing. I mean, I really want to. My goal is to be in bed by 10. But I just know that it's not. I mean, because I've, I've kept, it's trust difficult. me, I, I've scheduled myself in bed for 10. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to just, like, be honest with myself. I was going to get to bed at 12. So, I mean, maybe one I day. I find it interesting that you schedule rest. Oh, yeah. And fun. And I think that those are really important things. I know when I speak to to clients or, you know, you know get a massage it's, oh who has time for that or you know have a hobby or you know yeah. take a vacation no i'll take it later but it all feeds into your wellness you have to take mm -hmm. a break mm -hmm. you have to rest um every machine needs time yeah and productivity away. actually is not just about the time spent doing a task yeah. it's about other things other factors feed into it and rest is one of the number one factors that feeds into how productive you will be and so if we go back to the dimensions of, of our energy of our lives so we have the spirit the emotion the emo the mind the soul and the body mm. if you are downloading through your spirit you generally have to be quiet Mm -hmm. to be able to download that's why you know when people are meditating team they find that they get right ideas and things like that and then they process through the mind as well so even that whole time of processing you still need to be quiet yeah. somehow mm -hmm. um, so even if you're reading mm -hmm. even if you're watching something or you're listening to something it still requires a quietness so yeah. you can't be in a task orientated mind frame mm -hmm. at that time yeah. so in a way that's still rest because yeah. rest doesn't have to be you're passed out sleeping it exactly. could just be you making time to reconnect with yourself and process thoughts and what i realized is because um for my time manager for him he has watching tv under rest and for uh -huh. me, I have watching TV under wasted time. <laughs> so you know, it, but it depends on what you're so, watching. Yeah, now. so so it do, it does depend on that. But what I realize is that most of the time I was watching TV, it was just that you know I just fell up, you know, fell in front of the TV, and it wasn't something that you know was building or edifying me or anything. It was just that whatever happened to be on. But then he's very intentional about the shows that he watches. Like he, you know he knows that these are his shows and he's gonna like binge watch them because they make him happy and then i now have to analyze like what was fun or what was re what was rest for me and rest for me was going to art galleries you know mm. or um maybe going to the theater or something that was also rest for me mm. um 
Yeah, and I could do that alone. So I, what I realized is that resting for people is different as well. Yeah. Just like wellness is. Just like wellness. Our wellness journey is all, I mean, there's no pill. There's no one fix for everybody. We were speaking earlier and we are talking about how, I mean, even now, the way we eat, everybody's eating is, is individual, is different. Because yes, there are certain guidelines, like almost everything, there are certain guidelines. So for the eating part of it, eat as organically and as naturally as you can. So minimal uh, processed foods, yeah. eat more whole foods, drink water, and um, what else? What else is the general guide? Those are really the guidelines. And then, but the main part within those general guidelines, the main thing is that you are now listening to your body, exactly. to what your body likes. So, like, I do not do well with peanuts, but some people thrive on it. They are fine with mm -hmm. it. And um, I'm the only person in my family that actually doesn't process peanuts well. Every other person is fine. And you know, so if we're being mindful about even little things like that, if you feel bloated after eating a certain thing, that's your body telling yeah. you that I don't yeah. like it. Exactly. Something is off exactly. here. I mean, and food is the first medicine. Yes. You know, um, before you know, big pharma came along. Yeah. You know, before um, formalization, professionalization of healthcare and health services. You yeah. know how you ate, what you ate, um, and how you took care of your body, you know, that was really um, an individual um, thing. thing, you know, and I really believe like people always um, talk about fad diets and is this diet better than that diet, yeah. and, and we know that it's not about if a diet is better than, than another, it's yeah. about, you know, how, works. yeah, how does that diet play into, you know, your body's yeah. need for energy. Yeah. You know, energy <laughs> how is it you know how is it going to process it is it going to cause a reaction yeah you know if it's um, an iron deficiency and you're gonna have to up your iron intake um, today if it's that you know you need to, your blood pressure is high you're gonna have to reduce um, the fats and um, sugars in your diet it's just it's about respond responding, responding yeah. to what your body is telling you and or like I personally believe that um, and you know it's it's I believe that when there's a symptom your body's just trying to tell you something so I there was a doctor that I um, interned with and he's a, he's a friend of mine Dr. Rick and he's going to be on the show soon he would say that if the house is burning do you put out the fire or do you blow away the smoke so the, if you're having a headache as opposed to taking a pill mm -hmm. so the taking the pill is the what you're blowing the smoke but the fire is still on mm -hmm. so he's like go for the fire yeah. find the root cause why do you have that headache why are you feeling so poorly mm -hmm. you know as opposed to just taking a pill to take yeah. it away and all uh, and it's you know it's just really interesting how if we will just pull back from all the distractions around us and really just listen to our bodies mm. and you'll find that your your body is actually telling you what it needs on all dimensions if your body is telling you to be quiet listen to it and flow with it and that really goes back again i think i mentioned music and sound yeah it's what we're feeding our, ourselves it really matters um i mean there's some research i've forgotten the guy's name now but i will post it on the link under and he did a research on water and how water responds yes. to vibrations and words yeah, and, and stuff yeah, yeah. Uh, masato or something i will post it under and you know the the water crystals changes based on the kind of vibrations and the words and the sound that is coming at it and so um, some people have also done other research on it and taken it even further. So they've taken food, they've taken things that have food, that have high water content, and they've spoken love words to some, spoken um, spoken hate words to some, and then they've kept it, kept them all um, outside the refrigerator to see how quickly they will decay. Now the, the foods that were spoken love 
that our love words were spoken to did not decay as quickly as the foods that were spoken, as that harsh words were spoken to, which says, we just yeah. um, agrees with the research that Masato had, which I don't remember is Masato, but I'll post it. But it, it ties back to his research that the water crystals, I mean, those that had love words spoken to them, really beautiful. And, uh, and those that didn't have love words spoken to them looked sharp and cracked and all. So if we think that our bodies are 70% water, every sound that we're hearing, the words that we're speaking to ourselves, the books that we're, that, that we're reading, those words are going into us and it's shaping us, it's changing us from the inside out. And sometimes we're responding in a way, but we don't know what it is that um, why it is that we're responding. I mean, we, we're talking holistically, mind, body, health. I remember one time I was, there was this, let, let me not say happy, but I was listening to this album and I really loved it. I was really enjoying it. And then I realized that I was feeling depressed. I didn't connect it to the music. I was just feeling depressed. And then one day I, I just got out of the car after blasting and I just paused and I thought, hmm, what have I been listening to? So I went upstairs, Google is my friend, and Googled the lyrics of what I had been singing, and it was all about heartbreak. Mm. The whole album was about heartbreak. No wonder I was depressed. Mm. I know, and so I I make a conscious effort of not listening, of you know, reading the words of songs. Okay. I would read the lyrics, and if I'm not reading the words, I don't, I don't, I um, don't, listen to it yeah. so even the radio i'm mindful about what radio stations i listen to if the sound is off switch around it off and all but yeah what else i mean yeah i mean for me i'd say affirmations and journaling for sure yeah yeah um exercising for sure be mindful of what we eat paying attention um what else drinking more water getting rest um, and for me, another thing is aromatherapy. Mm. So I've built aromatherapy yeah. into my morning routine. Oh. So it's, you know, I put a few drops of um, aromatherapy oils into my bath, shower gel, and also into my moisturizer. And I also have a burner as well. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Oh, and then I, I have a diffuser. I also spray some lavender, like on my pillows at night as well. So yeah. I have this thing that Kemi, at spa at home. Is that what oh she's yeah, called? she's got the sleep yeah. set. Yeah. Yeah. So she has this. Um, there's this spray that she gave me that I sprayed. Yeah, that's spray in the room. I use it. Yeah, it's part of her meditation yeah. set, and I spray it all over the room, and that really helps. And I got some oils from her as well, so I put lavender yeah, in my. Okay, I don't do that. Yeah, she has. I put it in my spray for my hair so oh, the water spray lovely. for my hair so i just spritz it i'm trying to reduce my pollution my toxin um, overload okay. yeah so what i do my toxin load so what i do for body spray is i've mixed a few um different oils i have this spray bottle so in water i have grape grapefruit i have uh, i think i have lemon i have so lavender and then I just spray it all over me, and that's my my body spray. It doesn't last as long, so I carry it about, and especially in this heat. Yeah, especially in the heat, so it's very refreshing and and cool as well. So that that really helps. And uh, but yeah, that's uh, I've never thought about it. That's aromatherapy on the go. Yeah, you should try that. <laughs> should Maybe we'll put that. a recipe in the sugars. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. So well. That's us for today. We hope that you have picked up some nuggets from how we try to find balance. Yeah, and um, I guess over the course of this season, uh, we'll be speaking to different holistic um, wellness practitioners yeah. and encouraging you to also start your own wellness uh, practices journey. and journeys. Yeah. Um, and feel free to uh, mention some of yours as well in the comments. Um, yeah. And if you have questions, just send us your questions. Um, wellness questions that have bugged you. Um, there's a lot of information out there. Sometimes it's confusing as to what exactly. I mean, like the oils. Which oil exactly is good type thing. So if you have any of those questions, just feel free to 
pop it in the question in the comments box and we will you know work through to having having those questions answered that's what this is about so thank you for joining us today we look forward to seeing you again soon if you have enjoyed this and i know that you have enjoyed this um like subscribe and send to your friends and you know get everybody on that journey that you're starting as well thank you Thank <laughs> you.